Hello! Thank you guys so much for clicking this video today. I really appreciate it. In this video, we're going to be talking about how Cardano will overtake Ethereum. We're going to be talking about 11 ways Cardano will scale this year, congestion will be a thing of the past, and Cardano will be cheaper with more utility than Ethereum. And honestly, this is one of the best times to be in Cardano because all of the DEXs, all of the projects, everything that we've been waiting for is finally here. So we'll have all of Ethereum's utility with scalability and with more decentralization. This is gonna be a great video. We're also gonna be talking about Project Catalyst. Millions upon millions of more dollars were given to projects in the Cardano ecosystem to build. And you know, over the next couple of years, all of this money going out to fund these projects will build out the chain. So if you guys do enjoy this video, make sure you click the like button, comment down below, subscribe, hit the notification bell and click all. And if you could stay till the end, there's gonna be a lot of great information in this video today. So there's something called the blockchain trilemma. There are three things that are very hard to get right in cryptocurrency, and that is decentralization, security, and scalability. And many people in the Cardano ecosystem that have been here for a while know that the plan for Cardano was always to focus on decentralization, and security first and foremost, because this chain is meant to last 100 years. If there's gonna be infrastructure for a financial operating system, it needs to be peer reviewed. It needs to have checks and balances. And that's why decentralization and security are far more important than scalability. However, scalability was not forgotten about. Cardano was designed with scalability in mind. And that is one of the large benefits over Ethereum is the fact that Cardano was designed with scalability in mind. If we look at Bitcoin and we look at Ethereum, they're both decentralized, they're both secure, however, they lack the ability to scale. And Cardano, with hindsight, can actually look at the issues and the pros of both Bitcoin and Ethereum and build a better blockchain for the future that can scale and has those proper checks and balances for a real world financial operating system. And that's why this year Cardano will solve scalability. So let's talk about how Cardano will scale in 2022. Smart contract capability is now deployed on Cardano. The primary objective was correctness. Now we're focusing on performance and scaling, right? So not only do we have security and decentralization, we also have utility. And that's through these Alonzo smart contracts. Pipelining improves block propagation times by coalescing validation and propagation. The goal is for blocks to be propagated at least 95% of peers within five seconds by reducing the dead time between blocks. This provides the headroom to make more aggressive scaling changes, such as increasing a block size and increasing Plutoscript parameter limits. So to sum that up, what they're essentially saying is they're trying to improve the propagation of blocks, right? The minting of blocks and the propagation uh, is the time for the blocks to actually go through. Let's say I send you a transaction right now. Every 20 seconds, there's a block in Cardano. So improving the propagation time means increasing that time of 20 seconds even further. Input endorsers. Input endorsers improve block propagation times and throughput by allowing transactions to be separated into pre-constructed blocks. This improves the consistency of block propagation times and allows higher transactions rates. The reason pipelining is so important is because now that we have Alonzo, these blocks are full of so much more data and the data within those blocks is transactions. And the reason that the size is increasing is because of these smart contracts within these blocks and the more complicated transactions that people are using. For example, drip drops, you can withdraw 10 tokens at a time. That is a bigger transaction. Smart contracts are bigger transactions. So increasing block propagation time is very important because these blocks are getting so large. Memory and CPU parameters for Plutus. Memory usage is a more efficient across the chain. Specifically, there are memory improvements in unspent transaction output, UTXO, stake distribution, and live stake distribution and pools and hash representation. So why is memory use important? 
because not everybody has 16 gigabytes of RAM. You know, Cardano nodes need to run on smaller devices. You know, there's people in third world or second world countries that may not have the money to spend on a gaming PC that needs 16 gigabytes of RAM or 32 gigabytes of RAM to run a node. One issue with Solana is the sheer power that you need just to run the validator nodes. And it's very important for people to be able to run a full mode node on a mobile device or on a Raspberry Pi. So these memory increases really allow more people to interact and operate with the chain and you're not gonna be limited by your finances or your hardware. So this is a big deal right here, perhaps one of the biggest uh, deals. Plutus script enhancements, even more effective usage of the powerful extended UTXO model through smart contract optimization. And these are the three CIPs that I keep mentioning to you guys, 31, 32, and 33. The first one is reference inputs. Plutus scripts can inspect transaction inputs without needing to spend them. This means that it is not necessary to create UTXOs simply to inspect information held by an input. So this essentially means that it removes one of the layers of computation, you know, the, the requirement to inspect to make them more efficient. Plutus datums. Datums can be attached directly to outputs instead of a datum hashes. This simplifies how datums are used as a user can see the actual datum rather than having to supply datum that matches the given hash. So I didn't really know what a datum was, so I wanted to read that for you guys real quick. And as I learn more about this, I'll make sure to educate you as well. So hit that subscribe button. The datum is a piece of information that can be associated with a UTXO and is used to carry script state information such as its owners or the timing details. So it's essentially data you know, and that data could either be owners or timing details or other types of data. And often it is used in combination with a redeemer, which is arbitrary information included in a transaction to provide an input to the script. If you don't know that, no worries. I'm sure you won't need to unless you want to be a smart contract developer. Script sharing, the next important thing, Plutus script references can be associated with transaction outputs, meaning that they can be recorded on chain for subsequent reuse. It will not be necessary to supply a copy of a script with each transaction, hugely reducing friction for developers reusing scripts in multiple transactions, significantly reduces transaction size and improving throughput and reducing script execution costs. This is a very big one. There's essentially stating that you're gonna reduce the amount of times that you have to keep the whole script in a transaction. And we're talking about these block size increases. Well, if we actually decrease the size of scripts and the size of usage in these blocks, the more block room that we have will allow more transactions and more scripts on Cardano with CIP 33 here. Node enhancements, improvements will help even the distribution of stake and reward complications across epochs, thus providing a greater headroom for block size increases. Also, memory usage is now more efficient. And this has already happened. They actually released an update to Cardano node, which is what Daedalus uses, and it's what stake pool operators have to run to be in consensus with the rest of the protocol. And this node enhancement greatly reduced memory usage and what it did is the calculations for stake rewards was actually happening on the epoch transition. You know, let's say we're in epoch one, epochs are five days long, the next epoch starts. Well, all of your, your ADA rewards that you get paid for staking were actually included and calculated at the very end of each epoch. So what they've done now is they do that calculation across the entire epoch and that improves on memory usage and you know the chain moving forward and takes away uh, essentially the epoch delays. On disk storage, by storing portions of the protocol state on disks, nodes will need less in the memory, meaning that RAM constrained systems will be able to run nodes provided they have sufficient storage and memory will no longer be the bottleneck on scalability. This will enable significant growth in the blockchain state. So make sure you guys stay till the end. We have more important content to share, but we're almost done with the reading. I promise side chains. A side chain is a separate blockchain connected to the main blockchain. The main chain is also known as the parent chain, right? So the main chain is the layer one. It's the Cardano that we all use, know, and love for our ADA and our NFTs. Through a two-way mechanism called the bridge that enables the tokens and other assets from one chain to be used on another chain. Results return to the original chain. So essentially imagine you have another blockchain here, but it follows the same set of rules and returns that data back to the main chain. A good example of that is Milko Meta. 
is a side chain that is actually allowing developers to write contracts in Solidity. It's an EVM based side chain. So that is where we're going to see all of, you know, the bridges from Ethereum to Milko Meta, in my opinion. Assets can be moved between chains as needed. One single parent chain can have multiple inoperable side chains connected to it, which may operate completely in different ways. Look, they get into it. Uh, EVM side chains coming to Cardano include DC Sparks, Milko Meta, and IOG's Mamba. I've never heard of Mamba before. We'll have to look into that. Hydra introduces isomorphic state channels to maximize throughput, minimize latency, and occur low to no cost and greatly reduce storage requirements. Hydra provides a more efficient means to process transactions off chain while using the main chain ledger as a secure settlement layer. So it's essentially another way. It's another way of processing transactions without putting all of that data on the main chain. Last but not least, are right, we got two more now. Off chain computing, offloading some of computation, for example, asynchronous contract execution can drive greater core network efficiency. Transactions occur outside the blockchain itself, yet can offer fast, cheap transactions via a trust model. In Mithril, to achieve greater scalability, you need to address the complexity of critical operations that depend logarithmically on the number of participants. Mithril will improve chain synchronization while maintaining trust. The result? Multi-signature aggregation that is fast and efficient without compromising security features. So I know a little bit about Mithril. I may get something wrong. I don't think I will, but Mithril, from my understanding, it allows you to have a light client, but... It is essentially a full node, but you don't have to have the whole history of the blockchain stored. There's essentially checkpoints in the blockchain. And as long as you have the recent checkpoint history stored, it does not compromise the security of running a full node. That's pretty cool. So another reason that Cardano will outperform Ethereum in terms of utility, scalability, and decentralization moving forward is the decentralized funding model that Cardano offers. There's over half a billion dollars inside a treasury that all of the users in Cardano can vote on to fund builders and projects in the chain to bring real value to the blockchain, to build out utility, and also to bring value to the world. And there are so many proposals being funded right now, millions upon millions of dollars. These are happening about every three months. The amount of money going out every time is usually doubled with each different fund and we are now on fund seven so there are six other funds or five other because the first one was a, a test there were five other funds that have funded many projects on cardano many people building and a lot of those builders have really provided a lot of value one i can think of is uh, dc spark uh, liquid finance um, also block frost. There's been a lot, but this is honestly the best fund that I've ever seen. We're going to scroll through real quickly and look at some of these crazy names. But again, I would really appreciate it if you guys stay till the end. So one new net, uh, new net. I'm really happy to see that that is actually a singularity net project. They're essentially trying to decentralize computation. And one idea I had with Ben Gortzel on the podcast was to actually allow stake pool operators to run their nodes on a decentralized network. I'm sure that's far away, but I'm happy Happy to see them get some of that funding. And this is in the AI and singularity net scale. There's also some sustainable AI fake news, identity patterns, a lot more there. Innovative crowdfunding launch pad. So a launch pad that's coming. Free Oracle. I thought this was pretty cool. This is from Charlie Three, and this is actually a free Oracle for new projects. Happy to see that funded. M Labs was funded. That's good. Sorry if I'm missing your awesome project. I'm just trying to keep it short and to the point. Uh, the Shopify plugin, except ADA in a store. Very happy to see that. Uh, J Japanese ambassador and catalyst. That's not my favorite, but I'm happy to see that. PAB promotion in Japan. Promotion's good, honestly. Cardano game assets for utility. That's awesome. Not th That's not the one I wanted to get to, but I think it's really cool. The final and important one. Where is it? Ledger Live integration. So I've helped so many users set up a hardware wallet on Cardano, and there's a software for ledgers called Ledger Live. And normally you can't use that. In Ledger Live, you can store Bitcoin, Ethereum, but not ADA. And that is such a big deal. New users that are getting newly adopted to cryptocurrency and they set up their ledger, they don't see it on Ledger Live, which is what the software and the hardware actually tells you to download when you set up your ledger for the first time. So this has really been a big confusion for everyone. And I think this is going to be very good for the adoption of Cardano because some people actually like to buy coins just because they're on Ledger Live with everything else. So very happy to see that. But take a moment 
and scroll through all of these proposals. I mean, this is absolutely insane. And all of these projects, all of these people being, being given money from the blockchain are going to come and add value to the blockchain. They're gonna promote it. They're gonna educate. They're gonna build infrastructure. And this is huge. And this is only the beginning. You know, this is one year of these proposals going out. What will Cardano look like five years from now when we have millions of dollars going out to community members every three months for their value add? Great things are coming. I'm very excited to be in the Cardano ecosystem. 2022 is going to be another year where Cardano thrives and actually makes changes to cryptocurrency as a whole and sets the standard for what's to come. Thank you guys so much for coming to this video today. I really appreciate it. If you made it till the end, please comment down below. Cardano is setting the standard for cryptocurrency. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, notification bell, comment down below so we can push this video out to the wider cryptocurrency community so more people can know what's happening on this chain. Not too many people know about Project Catalyst. And honestly, that is sad because it is ridiculous how much money is going out to fund builders on this blockchain. See you guys. Love you. Have a good weekend.